Hello guys, welcome to Silver Screen Recap Hub. Today I will show you the recap of the movie called In Time, released in 2011. Humans will eventually undergo genetic modification to stop aging at the age of 25. The only catch is that once a person reaches the age of 25, they only have a year to live. The world's currency is now time, which is displayed as a timer on a person's forearm. While the poor literally live paycheck to paycheck, the rich can live forever. When Will awakens, he discovers that time is running out. He goes down and gives his mother Rachel a hug as she approaches her 50th birthday. When they begin discussing money, their celebration is cut short. Will is reminded of the bills and loans they need to pay by Rachel, who says she has three days left on her time. Will reassures her that he will find the funding. Rachel promises to repay a loan and will be gone for two days while working. She informs Will that they must meet at a bus stop so that he can give her more time. She then gives him 30 minutes so he can get a decent lunch and pay for it. Will gives her a final kiss before leaving for work. Will meets Maya, a young girl, on the way to work. When she requests a minute, Will cheerfully grants her five and cheerfully sends her off. He meets his friend Borel when he gets to work. Will manufactures time storage devices in a factory. He clocks out after a long day at work and receives his pay. He demands more money when he realizes that his payment is insufficient, but the distributor responds that the quota has gone up and Will didn't meet it. Later, when Will enters a nearby bar, some men approach him and invite him to gamble. Will declines, even after reminding one of the men that he still owes Will an hour. Will meets with Borel for an hour. Borel is drunk and points to someone who is buying drinks for everyone. He claims that the man has lived for more than a century. Will notices someone staring at the man and decides to let Henry know that someone is keeping an eye on him. The man refuses Will's request to leave because he is attracting too much attention. Everyone at the bar rushes out as soon as a group of men enters. Will is informed by Borel that they are robbers and extortionists known as Minutemen. Borel yanks Will away, but Will wants to hang around and observe. Borel departs after he gives him his word that he wouldn't do anything foolish. Fortis, the leader, declares that he wants Henry's time and even gives him the option of engaging in combat to obtain it. Henry enters the bathroom after acting nauseous. While a Minuteman watches, he throws up. Will enters abruptly, knocks the man out, and carries Henry away. Fortis and his men pursue Will and Henry as they flee. After scaling a gate and hiding inside an abandoned structure, they make their getaway. When one of the men tells Fortis that he recognized Will, the Minutemen stop pursuing them and almost catch up to them. When Will and Henry get to know one another, Henry says he's 105 years old. He justifies his reckless behavior by claiming that his mind is worn out and that he wishes for death. Will becomes irritated when he realizes that he and his mother must work multiple jobs in order to survive another day. Then Henry reveals the dark secrets of their terrifying universe. Rich people raise the cost of living, which causes poor people to keep dying and gives them more time to accumulate wealth. The truth is that everyone has more than enough time. But the wealthy and powerful are blinded by greed and their desire for immortality. Will responds when Henry asks him what he'll do with the same amount of time. Will responds that he won't waste his time like Henry if he has that much time. The two take a nap while Henry mulls over what Will has said. When morning arrives, Henry makes the choice to devote the majority of his time, all but five minutes, to a sleeping Will. When Will finally awakens, he finds that he has had more than a century to live. When he looks for Henry, he spots him perched on top of a bridge. Henry smiles and dives into the river as his last few seconds tick away. Later, when Will visits Borel, he finds Greta holding their newborn child. When Will asks for Borel, he tells him how much time he has. Borel inquires about Will's plans after hearing about the previous night's events from Will. Will wants to do justice now that he knows the truth. Will provides Borel with time before departing. Borel scans the bar across the street with his good fortune. In the meantime, Rachel repays a two-day loan and tries to take the bus, but she is unable to do so because the fare has increased in price. She begs the driver and the other passengers to listen, but they all turn away. She begins to run as she becomes desperate. With each second and each step, Rachel's death gets closer as the two are racing against time. They finally come face to face. Despite their best efforts to run, Will and Rachel are overcome by death. Will catches Rachel as she collapses, dead. Will sob as they realize how close they came to the life they had always wanted. While his mother lacks time, Will has all the time he's ever wanted. Timekeepers take Henry's body out of the river the following day. The senior timekeeper Raymond and his junior partner Jaeger look into the situation. Raymond spots a camera on the bridge as they are about to leave. Will, meanwhile, is sitting in a car with a new suit on and a fresh face. They cross over the time zone, 
a line dividing the various social classes. In the course of his journey, they pass through several borders and pay an ever-rising toll. Will is welcomed to the city of New Greenwich by the driver after crossing the last border, which cost him a year. Will responds that he wants to make the residents of New Greenwich pay when the driver inquires as to his true motivations for traveling to the town. From what Will is used to, the city is completely different. He immediately begins running after getting out of the car because he is still accustomed to having little time. He takes a look at his arm and begins to conduct himself more like a person with endless time. He had, nonetheless, already attracted Sylvia's attention. Will walks into a hotel and requests a suite. Will awakens in his opulent bedroom and is still with 105 years time left. Even though he is sleeping in the coziest bed possible in the best possible room with the best view, his mother's untimely passing still bothers him. For the first time in his life, he eats and drinks fine cuisine. He pays for his meal and leaves a weak tip to the waitress. The waitress remarks that Will doesn't behave like the other patrons and that he moves a little too quickly. Will quips sarcastically that he isn't particularly quick in the important things. Will wants to go into the casino, but first he needs to change his clothes. In the surveillance footage at the headquarters of the timekeeper, they recognize Will. According to Jaeger, a man traveled across numerous borders in order to reach New Greenwich. On the computer, they discover more details about Will, and Raymond reveals that he is acquainted with Will's father. Will walks into a casino and takes a seat at a poker table. Philippe, a billionaire with ages in his time, gets to know Will as the dealer deals. After a few poker games, Will has amassed winnings of more than two centuries. Philippe adds 50 more years to the pot. Will still makes a confident call despite this, and the river turns out to be the Six of Diamonds. Will's attention shifts away from the game and toward Sylvia, the lovely lady sitting next to Philippe. Rolling up his sleeves, Philippe reveals almost 10 millennia of time. He then discusses the enormous disparity between the rich and the poor, explaining it as the result of natural selection. He adds another two centuries. Will calls and bites, leaving his arm with just 30 seconds to go. Will benefits from the outcome and is given a millennium. This added excitement to Philippe's routine life. He asks Will if he believes Sylvia is his grandmother, mother, or wife after noticing that Will is staring at Sylvia. Will merely states that she is stunning. She accepts Philippe's invitation to a party after he introduces her as his daughter. Will uses his winnings the following day to buy a brand new car, which he then drives to Philippe's estate. There, he meets three generations of women who appear to be sisters. Will appears out of place among the elite group, he is rescued from a lonely night when Sylvia approaches. They learn more about one another, and as a result of their conversation, they start dancing. She inquires as to his ghetto origins, but Will neither confirms nor denies her assertions. Sylvia confides in him about her pointless existence and how the passage of time imprisons her rather than releasing her. Philippe and her spouse keep a wary eye on the two as this is going on, which prompts Will to take Sylvia to the beach outside. Will and Sylvia strip off before entering the water. They are floating inches apart on the water, naked, and their arms are illuminated by the moon. Sylvia moves away from him, but the waves pull her in. The romantic moment is abruptly broken by a call from the shore. When they get back, Philippe invites Will to play poker with him. The timekeepers, however, storm in and confront Will. When Raymond is seated in an office, he introduces himself. He asks him why he is in New Greenwich and how he has had more. Will responds truthfully and claims Henry gave it to him before killing himself. He is detained after Raymond questions his justification and seizes his time. Will questions him as he departs as to why he looks into suicide when homicides occur in the ghetto every day. He makes a statement that shocks Raymond because it makes him think of Will's father. Will then rushes outside to hold Sylvia hostage after attacking the timekeepers who were protecting her. The two get into his car and leave through the kitchen. During a car chase, Raymond rams Will's vehicle, putting them out of control. Will maneuver nicely in reverse, squeaking by an approaching truck. They lose the timekeepers, so they take cover under a bridge. Sylvia declines Will's request for her time. When morning arrives, they travel along the highways while driving through gridlock. They crash when the tire rips. The unconscious couple is approached by Fortis and his men. Sylvia loses time to him, but they hurry away and she is only left with 30 minutes. She is given some time by Will, after which they leave to obtain more. Will knocks on Borel's door with three seconds remaining. Greta responds and tells Will that Borel passed away as a result of alcohol poisoning. Sylvia is anxious because she only has a short amount of time. When Will notices her earring, they both run to the jeweler. He offers only two days' pay because he realizes they are in a desperate situation. When Will agrees, they run for cover as soon as they hear the timekeeper's sirens. They talk about Sylvia's family business as they stroll through the city. 
When Will inquires about their value, she responds that it is so great that knowing it won't matter. Will calls Raymond and requests that Philippe trade Sylvia for a thousand years in the ghetto city. He is forewarned by Raymond that if he keeps going, he will perish just like his father. Will claims that his father died in a fight, but Raymond counters that he was engaged in a riskier activity. When night falls, Sylvia settles into Will's apartment. When she inquires about his family, Will reveals the news of her mother's passing. He thinks back to his father and how, like him, he enjoyed gambling, though on a different game. In a game resembling gambling, his father would use his time instead of money. Although his father had won a lot, his acts of kindness led to his passing. They discover that they are roughly the same age, and as they learn more about one another's pasts, their bond deepens. When morning arrives, he checks to see if Philippe keeps up his end of the bargain. Sylvia is dissatisfied with her father because Will does not recognize any time transfers. Even though he didn't get the time, Will still plans to let Sylvia go. She thanks him with a kiss after he leads her to the phone booth and gives her a gun as a parting gift. She calls her father and scolds him for failing to fulfill Will's request. Will is standing behind her as they converse, and Raymond is aiming a gun at him. When Sylvia turns and sees Raymond, she immediately shoots him. Will attempts to use his gun on a bleeding Raymond, but instead of killing him, he gives him some time, and the two flee in his car. Sylvia inquires if he has any plans as the two are parked by the side of the main road. Being in a police vehicle allows them to play the role of a timekeeper by blocking an unfortunate driver. Will and the driver are startled by Sylvia's shot after she gets too comfortable with the weapon. They steal from the passenger before driving off in the new car. The two watch the news about them later that day while seated in the backseat of the car. Sylvia doesn't want to go back to her mundane life, despite Will's assurance that she can still go back to her father. With more time at his disposal, Will leans in for another kiss. Philippe assures his colleagues in his office that he did not pay the ransom. They question his ability to solve this problem, but before Philippe can defend himself, Raymond walks in. He informs Philippe that her daughter is resistant to being saved. Philippe expresses regret and blames his daughter's actions are based on Stockholm Syndrome. Raymond refuses to back down and informs him that he intends to arrest his daughter. Raymond is uninterested, so Philippe tries to buy him off with his time. Raymond then walks away. The following day, Will instructs Sylvia in safe gun handling. She offers to assist Will in obtaining the time he requires as they discuss his plan to give time to the people. In a flash, a truck smashes through the glass doors of the neighborhood lending business. The two successfully commit a heist, taking as many time storage devices as they can. The borrowers are urged to take as much time as they need, and as a result, everyone rushes in. Later on in the day, Will donates his time to Greta, Maya, and even the timeline distributor who does good deeds by donating people's time. For time being, Fortis keeps on harassing and killing people. Then he notices a 10-year reward for the capture of Will and Sylvia on display. Philippe is keeping an eye on the news as his daughter continues to try to steal from him. The two spend the night in a motel, which is surrounded later that evening by Raymond and the timekeepers. When Will and Sylvia realize they are being pursued, they leap out the window to get away. In the streets and through the shadowy alleyways, Raymond pursues them. A shootout starts after they ascend to the roofs. They make it onto a bus, and so they are able to escape from Raymond, for now. Fortis keeps looking for Will and Sylvia. He questions them and threatens to take their time. When one of them dies, a man steps up and says he knows where they are. The two sit on the couch in the motel and discuss the difficulties they will soon face. Both of them understand that they will perish if they are discovered. Sylvia felt more alive than ever during their time together and each time they came close to passing away. Fortis and his men suddenly knock down the door. Fortis decides to be kind and offers Will the chance to compete for his life. Will accepts Fortis' challenge to play a game of strong arm, and Fortis rolls up his sleeve. When Fortis loses concentration, Will, who had been struggling up until that point, reverses course. As his subordinates get closer to the table, fear can be seen in his eyes. Will pulls a gun from his ankle, shoots everyone, and drains Fortis of all his time. Standing on a rooftop, Will and Sylvia watch as prices continue to rise. Will expresses hopelessness and claims that every time the wealthy commit a crime, the cost of living rises. Only a million years, he claims, will make a difference. Sylvia concurs, but she already has a plan in place. The following day, Philippe walks into a building surrounded by numerous bodyguards. They are drawn to Sylvia when she calls out for her father. Will, one of the guards, is aiming a gun at Philippe's head. The guards comply with his order to lay down their weapons, and they then kidnap Philippe. There is a time vault in his office where a time storage with a million years is located. 
Philippe makes an attempt to explain how society will fail if that time is misused. According to him, there will always be someone willing to make human sacrifices in order to achieve immortality. Will loses control of his rage and points a gun at him, but he quickly regains composure. Philippe is informed by Will that not even one person's life is worth sacrificing for immortality. Then the two walk away. Police cars begin to block the main road in the meantime. Will and Sylvia's car is shot at by the timekeepers, but they miraculously escape unharmed and ram the toll booth to cross the border. Raymond pursues them because he is persistent. As they approach safety once they reach the ghetto, Raymond stops them and rams into them. Will survives and requests Maya to distribute to the people the million years. The two are threatened by Raymond with a gun, but the commotion in the crowd blocks his view, allowing them to flee. After Raymond steals a vehicle, the pursuit continues. They finally collide in the middle of the street. Raymond, who acknowledges being from a ghetto, says that as he discovered ways to overcome poverty, dawned on him as well the hard truth that the gap between the rich and the poor must be maintained. Raymond is aware that his time is up as they continue to speak. He immediately passes away, and the two look for a way to refuel their own. Raymond's vehicle is in the distance. With only seconds remaining, they sprint in its direction. Will arrives first and is awarded his time. He then runs to Sylvia, who is only seconds left. Just in time, the two stumble into each other's arms, saving each other's lives and allowing them to live another day. People are now entering more expensive regions across borders. The Minutemen observe as their social structure breaks down. Sylvia and Will carry on as usual, this time traveling to a large time bank. The movie end here, thank you for watching. Take care and stay healthy.